hello, 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 you are here at a Passion for Christ Ministries, where here we have a great passion for souls. In the Lord of I am your co-pastor, David Thomas. This is our Friday night miracle and healing service. That's what it is. It's our healing, our miracle and healing service tonight. My God, I have a great message prepared for you today. And, you know, we are a financially sponsored church. And we are now on YouTube, we're on Instagram, and we are on Facebook. And we need your help. Yes. And WJYS, which will be coming on tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Right? At 8 o'clock. And we need your help. We need your help. I know that it's real bad. The economy is very bad. It's a lot of people that are out of work and things like this. I understand that. And a lot of people may be offended. So how can you be asking for money? Well, we need your help to get the gospel to the world. And Jesus is the only one that can bless you. Jesus is the only one. You'll be given to his great work. We are a financially sponsored ministry. And we need your help. If God lays it on your heart to um, make a sacrifice, please send it to P.O. Box. Reverend Beverly Denise Thomas, P.O. Box 498-525, Chicago, Illinois. That's Reverend Beverly Denise Thomas, P.O. Box 498-525, and that's Chicago, Illinois. Please, we need your help to get the gospel. We'll take it and we'll put it back in the ministry to reach the lost. And that's what it's all about in this hour. I'm not sure what others are doing, but this is what we are doing. So I have another great message for you today. And the name of our message on the day, the topic of our discussion is, it's a great time for compassion and genuine care. It's a great time for compassion and genuine care. It's a great time for it. It's a great time for it. It is a great time for compassion and genuine care. Yeah. Genuine. Is it genuine? Of course it is. The word compassion means a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another. And I want you to think about what I just said. The word compassion means a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another. Let us ponder that word deep. And how will we ponder that word deep? We'll ponder that word deep by defining it. And it means extending far down from the topic of the surface. The word deep means extending far down from the top or the surface. You cannot see deep if you're on the surface. You have to go deep. And compassion is what goes deep. God's compassion goes deep. It goes deep. It extends far down from the surface. And guess what? It's a great time for it. Many will uh, uh, say that it's not. How can we be talking about compassion in such a time like this? Well, we're talking about God. God does not think the way man thinks. God does not move the way man moves. God does not act the way man acts. This is a great, this is a perfect storm for God. It's a perfect storm for compassion and genuine care. Psalms 86 and 15 says, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, plenteous, plenteous, plenteous in mercy and in truth. In the beginning of this scripture in Psalms 86 and 15, he says, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion. When you think about the word full, my God and my Lord, there's nothing to add when it's full. Yeah, you're getting ready to get on the elevator and, and they come. You've been waiting for the elevator for a long time. It never happened to you being in a building and you get ready to step on it and you're like, ah, oh, it's full. <laughs> This elevator full. That means you can't add nothing. And God is full of compassion. Full of it. If he's full of compassion, that's where we need to go to get it. If he's full of it. Right? Amen. You know, growing up was difficult to me. Because as a young man, I grew up living in the projects half my life. So I did not see much compassion or people showing that they really cared about one another. Or what someone else was going through. Uh, my mom and my dad did the best they could do in raising five kids and considering the difficult circumstances they themselves were in. Our family truly did not know about compassion, nor understand it. But like I said before, my parents had their own issues and soon those issues would surface. And my father left the home when I was young, and so now our family became what I had seen in my friends and my friends' families, and that is a broken home. So what did I do? I ran. I ran right into the streets. 
right into the wrong hands. Uh, but I ran with anger and I ran with bitterness and I ran with frustration. No hope, no direction. Lost in the world of sin and unforgiveness. I was broken. I wanted everyone to see and to feel what I felt. I needed something deeper than a listening ear. I needed to be fixed in the inside. I needed something no one else could give, and it had to be real. It had to be lasting, and it had to be strong. It had to be God's compassion. Yes. It had to be. A human being could not help me, even though I love my mom and I love my daddy, but they couldn't understand what I was really, what I really wanted. And so our home was broken. My dad left, and all I could think about is hurting. That's the only thing that was on my mind. Hurry. Psalm 78 and 38 says, But he, which is God, there's that word again, being full of compassion, uh, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. It says, Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. My God, is this a God of great compassion? My God, my Lord was looking at me in the streets and treating people wrong, people treating me wrong. He was watching me curse and smoke and drink and he didn't love what I was doing, but he had compassion on me because he saw what I could be in him. And so he had compassion. He didn't let me die and go to hell because God cannot use you or help you when you're in sin. And, and it says right here in Psalm 78 and 38, in the B part, it says, Yea, many a times turned he his anger away. He turned away, but he couldn't let me die. But he didn't. And why did he not? Because he was having compassion, because he knew I was running. He knew I was hurt. He knew the circumstances that I had went through. He cared about what I was going through. He cared about it. Yet while we were in sin, Christ yet died for our sins. I didn't even know about Jesus. I didn't even know about being righteous. And I didn't know about a Savior that had died on the cross. I, I didn't know about a Savior that has been stretched out. All I knew was drugs, money, and women. All I knew was drugs, money, women, and songs and music that did not elevate God. That's all I knew. I grew up that way. But God had compassion on me. It was a great time for compassion and genuine because that's what I needed. And God knew that's what I needed. He knew that's what I needed. Remember, we talked about the word deep. And that's what I needed. I needed somebody to go in the inside. I needed somebody to search the innermost part of me. I needed somebody to talk with me and to reason with me. That's what I needed. I needed somebody to reason with me. Amen. When I said something to him, he didn't have to turn away and say, I don't understand you, but he knew you know how you come and talk to somebody and you keep talking and keep talking and they shaking their head and you know they don't understand nothing you're saying. Yeah. And it's not because you're it's not because you're not making any sense. They just don't understand that deep hurt. Human beings are good, wives are good, husbands are good, but nobody is greater than Jesus. Nobody can seal and <laughs> yes, nobody can soothe that wound inside. It's a great time for compassion and genuine care. Think about the word genuine. The word genuine means free from pretense, not counterfeit, no hypocrisy, sincere. How many relationships have I been in before I got saved that it was full of hypocrisy, pretense, counterfeit? People were looking for what they can get out of you and you were looking for what you could get out of them. How many? How many times have you hurt somebody and not forgave them and, and the thing is, is that uh, you didn't forgive them but you was out there hurting people and they was hurting you? Right? It's something to really think about, isn't it? It's a great time. It's a great time for compassion and genuine care. I said genuine. Let's go over that definition again about genuine. Free from pretense, not counterfeit, no hypocrisy. It's sincere. It's real. Some of you, you play around with the word of God and you play around with your own feelings thinking that you are justified and treating people mean, but you're not justified. You don't have compassion because you don't have a born again experience, but you can get one. It's made freely for everyone. He said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, and when you call on him for sure now, when you call on him for sure and you want that compassion, you can have it. It's made available to every human being. 
You can be changed. You can be delivered. You don't have to walk like everybody and talk like everybody because everybody is on the road, that broad road, which leads to destruction. You don't have to be on that road. That compassion that Jesus gave on the cross, that was compassion that held him there. That was compassion that talked to the Father in, in heaven and told him, Lo, in the volume of the book it is written, yeah. I. Yeah. That was compassion. He said, Lo, in the volume of the book it is written, I have come to do thy will, O God. What was the will that down on the cross for me and you? This Christmas is coming up. How are we ever to have a Christmas? What is Christmas all about? Jesus is the reason for the season. But what do you see out here now? Everything has taken the place of Jesus. That doesn't have to be with you. And you follow society, you will never ever be able to grow in Jesus and have a true born again experience or have a true experience with Jesus following the society rules and regulations. Right? It is hard to feel compassion or have compassion in this hour we live in with so much that is going on. It is even more difficult to have compassion on someone who hurt you, who abused you, who misused your trust in them. So in saying this, you cannot give out something that you do not have. And that's why the importance is placed on those of us who carry God's compassion so that we can show them. And the devil is trying to take that compassion that you have. He's trying to take that light of compassion out of your heart. That causes you to look at the things that's coming on earth. But the Lord had already told you what to look for. I have a prophecy that I'm going to read to you. It matches right in here. And it's dated Friday night, December the 20th, 1985. He said, thus said the Lord, I see your love, your love for me. I see your compassion for lost humanity. I see you walking in my paths, my paths of righteousness. And I am sending my blessings upon you daily. I am with you. I walk with you. Do not be afraid of this hour. I warned you again and again, oh, excuse me, of the tribulations and the trials that you would have in this final hour. I warned you again and again of the battles of the mind. Some of you got ready and others did not. He says some of you got ready. You held on to the truth. You held on to everything that was coming over the pulpit. You studied the word. You used it for your life. You got up in the morning when Jesus called you to come and pray. And now you're lacking in that and now you're not ready. A church can't get you into heaven. Jesus is the only one that can get you. He's the door. No church can get you into heaven. It's the doctrine of Jesus Christ that can get you into heaven, which is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Greek and then also to the Jew, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. Right? It's the power of God unto salvation. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved, and that is through the name of Jesus Christ. And you cannot have a born-again experience without going through Jesus. There's a nation of people that are out right now that talk about enlightenment, talking about they have tapped into uh, the way of um, eternal life without Jesus. That's false doctrine. You cannot have eternal life without the Christ. Magic has replaced everything that is on the TVs now. Magic and voodoo and oh my God, it's just replacing everything. And how are you living for God? You got to ask yourself this. How are you accepting God's compassion? Jesus' compassion. But the Lord is letting you know today, it's a great time for it. And you can accept it and he can give it to you because the Lord will never force himself into your life. He'll give you all that you will need and all you have to do is reach up and get it. If the table is spread, he said, come and dine. Come and dine with him. Come and eat at his table. Bring your burdens. Bring your cares. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. First Peter 5 and 7, he says, casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. God wanted me to tell you today, he cares about you. He cares. He cares what you're going through. He cares about your thoughts. He cares about what you feel in this hour. He cares about your heart. Your heart's desires. He cares about you. But you have to consider your ways and you have to come and reason with him. Jesus only reasons through his truth. He doesn't reason no other way. He reasons through his truth. He doesn't reason no other way. He reasons through his truth. When you come to him, you got to be looking for truth. Because that's all he had for you. He says, 
In St. John, the fourth chapter, verse 23 and 24, but the hour cometh and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's the truth that will set you free. It sounds corny. It sounds so um, cliche. And most people, most people that hear it, they quote it. Oh, we know the Bible and we know the scriptures and we know about the word. But what you are failing to realize, you're not free unless you love the truth. And you're not living in the truth if you're not living in Jesus. That's the passion. God, God the Father sent his son down here to die for your sins. That is great compassion for you. He had to turn away from his only begotten son. And think about the scriptures. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only. That means he's the only one he had. And he gave it to the whole world. And he had to turn his back on him for you. So that you could be free. So that you won't have to stand up there and say, Jesus paid it all. And then you go on and keep sinning. No, Jesus paid the price for your present sins. And your past sins. He paid it all. But he's an example that you may live righteous. He's an example that you may live holy. He's an example that you have to follow him in everything. If you go to school and they give you an example to a math problem, if you don't follow that example, you won't get the answer. If you don't follow Jesus in everything exactly as he has said, you will never get the right answer. You've got to be righteous in this hour. You've got to stand strong. How do you think you can stand strong? By living through the love of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave everything yes. with great compassion. Yes. God loves you. Yes. God loves you. God wants you to serve him. And God has a plan for you. Yes. God wants to heal your body. Some of you are trying to chapter verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and their places. And the word of God said he had no place to lay his head, but he went to their places teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He had to tell them. It says, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness, every disease among the people. So why can't we have this? Why should I be able to read this and not have it? Why should I pretend that it's just the word of God and not know that it is the word of God? It's a difference. Some of you have not been taught right. You just have not been taught right. You know how a mother and a daddy is when they see their child and the child just think that mom is just trying to spoil their life. They say, son, I don't think you should stick with that person. That's right. That person is not good for you. They're influencing you and they're doing the wrong. Ma, you guys don't want me. I had no fun. You mean to tell me losing your life is fun? <laughs> this person is on the railroad tracks. You are no more than four or five and a half feet. The train can't see you at all. And there you are playing around, playing chicken with your friends, not even thinking to yourself. Just the other day on the news, the kids went out, stole a car, mostly all of them died. Yes. Teenagers. Yes. Do you see? See, at the time, it's fun. At the time, the enemy don't tell you that you're doing something so dangerous that it's going to cost you your life. At the moment, it's fun. And see, that's the way some of you are right now. At the moment, it's fun for you right now. But see, now you're in a place right now, you got to start thinking. And you know, it's something to get older and still do foolish things. <laughs> you're at the age of 40, but yet you're still acting like you're 12 and 13. And then you get mad when somebody tells you the truth. You act like a kid. You act like a kid. And they just proved you right there. <laughs> they just proved it. Paul said, when I was young, I spanked as a yeah. child. He said, but when I got old, I put away foolish things because I knew that I had a calling upon my life and I had to answer that. I had to be more compassionate. Mm -hmm. And there he was, Jesus. He was healing every sickness and every disease among yeah. the people. Yeah. Verse 36 says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. Yeah. When he looked out there and he saw me, he was moved with compassion. When he looked ahead of time and saw me yeah. lingering in the alley, he said, take me to the alley. <laughs> I love it. He said, take me to the alley. They say, Jesus, isn't this over here where all the, uh, the fame and the glitter? He said, no, take me where they are lost and low. Yes, now. He said, take me in the place uh, where they're eating out of the garbage cans. I want to go to that place. Yes, he said, you can't. You got to be mistaken. He said, no, I'm not mistaken. 
And this is why I come. And this is why the Jews killed him and destroyed him because they thought he was coming as a high king. And, but he came low and meek. They said that cannot be the Savior. Yes, yes, that cannot yes, be Jesus. Yes, but yes. Jesus was letting them know at that moment, I come with compassion. Yes. The scriptures tell us in Matthew, the first chapter, he had come to save them from their sins. Yes. He just wanted to help. Yes. That's all he wanted to do. Yes. He just wanted to help. Yes. He said, can I help you? Yes. But yet they killed him because all he wanted to do was help. Yes. It's a great time for compassion and genuine care for your life. Yes. No, a human being cannot give you the compassion I'm talking about. I'm talking about Calvary's compassion. You need that deep. Remember I told you about the word deep in the beginning. You need it. It needs to get in that nicks and cranny like a... a, a English muffin. <laughs> you know, when you put the butter on there and it melts, it goes, and you look at, you ever looked at an English muffin when you toast it, the butter it goes into the nooks and crannies, and when you crunch on it, you can taste every, but they made it just like that. So that you can taste it, so that you can, it's good advertising, ain't it? And then when you, you, I want to give me another one. That's the way it is with God's compassion. Yeah. He made it that way, so that you can want more of it. Wonderful. Right? Yeah. And it says in verse 37, it says, And then he said unto his disciples, Look at the disciples. He said unto the disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore, in verse 38, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his harvest. And the reason why that was is that the labors are few is because God is calling, but few are, answer, are not answering God's call. Yes. In truth. Yes. They're answering, but not in truth. But God gets down to the business and tells you why you're here, and he tells you what he wants from you, then all of a sudden, you don't want Jesus anymore. Do you know we're blessed people to be in the truth? Yes. You know, we could have ran when Jesus first told, he was such a smooth operator when he got down and, 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 and showed me how to pray and showed me what I needed to do. He didn't just beat me over the head when I was out in the streets and told me, you sinner, you dirty dog, you need to, you are disrespecting my cross, and he didn't do that to me. He brought me in. With compassion and love. Yeah. And then when he brought me in, he settled me down and told me about his truth and showed me his word. But then way in the midnight hour when I was seeking his face and telling him how wonderful he was for saving me, he began to take my mind back on what he saved me from. Yeah. And I began to place him more with such compassion. At that time, it was great time. He was perfect in his time. Right? Many people are not calling in truth and in all reality. God is calling through a voice of compassion because God realizes the hour has made itself ready for his perfect timing. This hour has made itself ready for God's perfect timing. And you're in it. Yes. You're in it. Yes. Yes. The word timing, let's think about the word timing for a minute. Now the word timing means the control of the speed of a stroke or a blow. <laughs> My God and my Lord, the word timing means the control of the speed of a stroke or a blow in order that it may reach its maximum at the proper moment. And I'll put it at the proper time. And that's what God does when he moves with his right hand. At the right time. Let's talk about Philip and the unit for a minute. Let's go to Acts the 8th chapter. Acts the 8th chapter, verse 26. And it reads, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go towards the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Verse 27 says, And he arose. Now that's the key. He obeyed. When the Lord told him to do something, he did it. Some of you take it so light, disobeying God. But you can't continue to disobey God and continue to be blessed. It'll never happen the way that you want it to happen in your life if you continue to disobey. Disobedience brings um, a place of complacency. Uh, disobedience makes you feel like it's all right and everything is good. You stay in that state, you will never be able to get the thoughts of God the way you need. And then the devil is there to tell you every which way to go and you'll go. But it says right here, Philip, he arose when the Lord told him to and he went. And it says, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under who had the charge of all her treasures, I'm sorry, let's read that again. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So here's this man was with somebody that had riches. So he didn't want for nothing. So Philip 
There he was listening to the word of the Lord. He could have said, Lord, why are you sending me to this man that's up under this queen and that has treasures? He don't want nothing, but Philip knew God. And just like us in this hour, we know God. When God moves, we know that it's time for compassion. We know that. Right? Some of you say, I need compassion, Pastor David. You have got to listen to the prophecy because it says you didn't make yourself ready. Come on, somebody, and you got to always be ready. You got to always be ready. You got to always be ready when you're serving the Lord. Because when you receive a born again experience, God depends on you to show love when the times are hard. And he, he depends on you to show love when people don't understand what's going on around them. He depends on you to show his light. That's the reason why the light shines and the darkness comprehended not. Because people will not understand why you have peace. They won't understand why you're still standing. They won't understand that you're still strong. They won't understand and you'll say, to the cross. Yeah. You'll point them right to the cross. Because they'll ask you, well, why are you still standing? Why do you still have peace? And why do you still show love in the midst of all the chaos? And how do you still have a peace of mind? And why do you still smile and laugh when people are being broken down in tears? And why do you, and you'll say, it's because of the cross. Yes. It's because of the cross. That's compassion. So there was Philip, and the eunuch was right there. This is perfect timing. Perfect. Remember, timing means the control of the speed of a stroke blow in order that it may reach its maximum at the proper moment. That's God's mighty hand. First, let's drop down to verse 30 in Acts, the 8th chapter. And Philip ran thither, and after he got the commandment, he ran. It says Philip ran. He didn't just waste time. He knew God was doing something. He knew it. The Lord told him to go. He, he went and then Philip, there he was in 30. It says, and Philip ran thither to him. To what? To the eunuch. And heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, how can I? Except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Now Philip had the truth. Because Philip had the truth, he could explain to him about the scripture in truth. And the Lord sent him right there at perfect timing to talk to the eunuch because the eunuch needed compassion. Verse 32 says, The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. So the eunuch had a compassionate scripture right in front of him. And he had to have somebody elaborate on that compassionate. Philip carried it, just like the, us that have the truth and the blood and the born again experience. When people come to you, they won't to understand what is this compassion that's in this Bible that you talk about that you say you stand on. Philip had it. Right? Verse 33 says, In his humility, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life was taken from the earth. Verse 34 says, And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet? This of himself or some other man. Then Philip opened up his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Philip said, that's a door for me right there. The eunuch wanted to know, so is the prophet talking about himself? And Philip said, oh, that's a good time for the show compassion. <laughs> so as that door opened, he was right there. Are you doing that? The door opened or do you mess 